Okay, so uh, I got this today, which I bought off eBay for 10 quid, and it's called a Pocket Simon. This is a 1980s, circa 1980s game. Uh, don't know if any of you remember this, but it's a game that uh, children would use, or adults even, uh, to test their memory of tones and lights. So let's let's try and unpack this. So I'm going to do this with you. I haven't done it before. As you can see, it's still all packed straight out of the box that was just lifted off the doorstep a few minutes ago. I think this came from Scott or something like that. I don't know why that's got anything to do with anything, but it has in terms of where I got it from. Not sure what that is. On the back, but anyway, so there it is. It's got a few scratches on the front of it. Uh, I thought on the photograph actually that that was some sort of covering, but it looks to have been scratched on the anodized part of this aluminium, which I assume is aluminium. Uh, so the idea of the game this doesn't work apparently. Uh, the idea of the game is basically when you turn it on, you start the game, and this. Uh, will give you four lights in a sequence and then you've got to press the buttons in the order that you saw the lights and then it will give you a, a, another sequence and so on up to 30 I think it's up to 32 or 31 in the sequence so that's quite a lot to remember and there's also different modes so um, there's, there's, there's three kinds of games I think it's a single player mode is one and then two is multiplayer and three is multiplayer slightly different and that's the skill levels which are applicable depending on what mode the game is in anyway um so it looks sort of cosmetically okay on the top so probably needs a bit of a clean on the back we've got uh what looks like to be a battery compartment and and it looks as if it's got some corrosion whether that's got anything to do with the problem um so let's have a look inside so if we can see anything obvious so i'll just try and take these screws out here i don't know if that's a high or a low serial number on there it's quite quite a few numbers in it but they probably made millions of these i'm guessing i don't really know I've never had one before, never played with one before. Um, but I just thought it looked interesting. And also, I've just noticed actually that it seems to have two different battery types. Well, that look, ah, so that looks like a, a PP3, I think, 9 volt battery. And two 1.5s. Hmm. Very odd. Okay, so that's the inside of the case. Complete with bits of biscuit or I don't know what are in there. Oh, something's falling out there. And another thing is falling out. Everything's falling out. Okay, so that's the three screws. I'll just pop those into the case over there. So it definitely needs a good clean. And there's some little bulbs on there the actual bulbs I can't tell for sure whether those bulbs are working at the moment I don't know if they're screwed or pushing or what they are right well I won't do anything with that just at the moment then there's this bit which seems to all oh, right okay so I guess this is uh it's a bit like the old controllers in the day Yes, it is actually exactly like that. So you've got those rubberized pads again with graphite, I think, graphite, uh, which is a carbonate based thing. Uh, right, okay, so there we go. So, yeah, all right, put that back over there. So that's that's for the buttons, the yellow, yellow, green, red and blue buttons, push buttons and oh my yes i can see it i can see the problem 
already, I think. At least on the face of it. Don't know for sure, but that, that sure looks like it could be corrosion. Whether the track's finished there, I don't know. We'll have to do some investigation on that. Um, not quite sure how this comes out, whether it just pops out. I can't see any other screws on the front or on the back, actually. I don't want to force it. Yeah, I'm going to have to disassemble this whole thing, I think. Uh, but the problem is, at the moment, I can't seem to get that to come off. I think this this here might have to be unclipped somehow. No, that doesn't want to come out. That's, that's being quite awkward. Uh, that bit's all right, but this bit seems to be... Ah, right, okay. So, that simply... Oops, there's all sorts of stuff falling out of it now. I don't know what that is. I don't like the look of it, though. Yep. Um, all right, okay. Oh, oh, and there's this as well, which appears to have fallen out now. Good job I've got this on camera so I can remember how it all goes together. And there's this which I absolutely have no idea what it does but I'm assuming it's some kind of reflector for the lamps. Alright, oh, let me take that out and we'll, as I say, I had the camera on it obviously so it's recording where things come off and what order they came off in and we have some sort of push fit thing here which is going to reveal what looks like to be the, the horror of what's underneath it fantastic okay so it looks like I've uh, completely disassembled <laughs> without a care in the world but I'm sure we'll work it out. Okay, so these leaves are for the switches. And I'll just pop them in there. I know where all this is all coming from. Pop those in there, pop those. This is all going to get completely cleaned. Uh, so I'm going to move those out of the way. Can't really, I can't really get this off at the moment because uh, obviously that soldered on. So I need to desolder that and to, to have a very good close look at these tracks from what I'm seeing well those tracks are not in good not in good condition at all whether they're broken or not I don't know but it sure looks like they are certainly this is corrosion from the battery um, is there any any metal? Oh, there is. So this could just be surface corrosion on the track. May possibly, possibly be salvageable. I don't know. I have to do a little bit more scraping there to see. I'll scrape this all off now. Didn't really intend to do this much on this part of the video, but uh, my curiosity makes me makes me do it. I suppose I'll have to test that with a, a meter. Well, let's have a look here. I think, yeah, I think the same is for here because they're big, thick tracks. I think we might possibly be okay. So, right, let's turn this on to continuity mode. So, this looks like to be a power track here. Well, that seems to be alright. Um, 
I'm not sure what and that one seems to go to here that seems to be all right and that one seems to go to I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure why does that have a hole in it. I'm not sure if these are through holes. It's kind of weird. I can't even see that track. I think it goes there actually. And it does, amazingly enough. And this one. goes there. This one goes there. This one goes there. Is it? Yeah. This one goes to there. Right, okay, so those dodgy looking tracks actually, even though despite the fact that they look horrible, um seem to all be connected. I think what I need to do first of all is clear up the corrosion around the battery terminals, uh, resold, take this off and uh, put some white vinegar on here and then work that in and clean it up and see what we're left with and give this a thorough clean. So that that will be the thing that I will do next. But while I'm here, while I'm here looking at these things I'm going to test these bulbs and see if we've got any continuity there so that bulb looks as if it's all right that bulb looks as if it's all right that one does that one does so we look as if uh, the bulbs are okay it looks as if these leaf switch connectors are okay in terms of their connections to the to these pads um, about the chips I don't know uh, these these connections here are these soldered soldered connections and that's all they are by the looks of it uh, probably just need a good clean I think uh, with some IPA but let's get this cleaned up let's get this cleaned up and then we'll come back and take a further look at it but I just wanted you to see it being unpacked so you could join in with me to, to view that as it happened and uh, we'll take it from there. Right, be back in a moment. Okay, right, so I've got a soldering iron turned on so we'll try and clean this up a little bit. I've got my trusty fibre brush here. trusty paintbrush. One thing to remember when you're working with fiberglass brushes is that they deposit little shards from the tip uh, onto what you're working on. Um, so it's a good idea to be a little bit careful about what you'll, where these shards get left and to clean up after you. Probably not a good idea to have a fan blowing them all over the place. I'm going to get some IPA. I'm going to try and clean this up. Try and make it look a bit more visible if I can. Um, sometimes you get a bit of IPA on it, you start to clean it up, you can actually see what's underneath. Board probably needs a good general clean anyway, so it won't do it any harm. Um, get some of this old flux and muck off. Yeah, right, okay. Um, let's have a look here. Get this out of the way. I'll clean this up in a minute.
So here we're doing much more cleaning, um, quite a considerable amount of cleaning actually, and uh, I make a rather large puddle of alcohol on the bench, which is not good. And more cleaning, and more cleaning. Uh, this corroded track is almost impossible to get totally clean. Certainly with a fibre tip pen, that didn't really work. Uh, the only way that I would have been able to do this realistically in this condition um, was to be scratching completely all the, all the, uh, the top off the track, which I did some of later. And the cleaning goes on and on and on. Uh, so here I'm trying to uh, get the tabs for the battery connections clean using a toothbrush and uh, <laughs> my fibre tip pen again. Um, I mean the object really is to just get enough of this cleaned up so it make a good contact uh, and not worry about it being totally pristine so to speak. Um, so I carry on with that for a little while but then uh, decide to get the nail file out uh, because it's not quite good enough for me I have to make it better um, so that's what I did this is a jumbo sized nail file from somewhere and yeah I'm going back to bare metal basically so um, right so I've cleaned up that horrible puddle that I made apologies for that and um, I decided to take apart this this front color cover and see what was inside that so there's all the little segments and you can see some of them are quite mucky fortunately uh, the people who created this uh, put a little b r g and y on there so you know back where, which way they go when you try and put them back and see if I can clean up these I don't want to use isopropyl alcohol because I don't know what effect it might have and this seems to have a, a fairly good cleaning action using this uh, just give them all a little they're not too bad actually most of them but I'll just give them a little bit of a clean and I am making such a mess on this bench These little segments are not in bad condition actually, not too bad at all. Right, so let's give that a wipe. I gave that a quick wipe, uh, not that it can make it any better than it is really. But anyway, uh, I'm guessing that these will just sit in here. like so and then that sits on the top and then this clamps those down that's pretty much it and when you press the buttons when you press the buttons these little protrusions actually will come down and push the little rubberized connectors onto the pads so that's how I think it works so if I go back to here for a moment let's have a look at what we've got here there's lots of bits to this isn't there but when this this has to flip over in order to fit into here so I think this double set of contacts here goes here and this single set of contacts goes here I believe uh, because that's in the middle of those two so I think that's right um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and turn this over uh, and of course it's going to fall out isn't it well that's okay we don't need to worry about that right at the moment and let's try and locate that in there 
what does that feel like? Yep, they seem to work in their positions. I think we got that right. Thank goodness. Uh, now this, which is the back of it, I'm assuming this will just sit in there because as this sits on the front, the back must be sitting on that. So I think that just gets positioned here. Um, and then the lights will obviously be illuminating the top. So I think that's right. And I think this creates a speaker assembly. <laughs> speaker assembly with this piezo speaker in there. I can't think of anything else it can be. So, um, which one's positive? God, everything's falling out. Uh, right, so positive is that one. So, this one needs to go back in there. He says, that's what it looks like to me. Hopefully I'm right. I think that is right. Try and push these little connectors inside. Sit those down where they're supposed to be. And hopefully this will sit where it needs to sit. We're not situated correctly in it, I do not think. Uh, why do I say that? Because I know it to be so because I didn't have that in the right locating lugs. Now it is. Now it's locked in. Now the corners of this, this board are inside this, this circle. So this should actually now close over the top. Right. Here, yeah, this is the positive one there. So that goes to that one. down in here and two Duracells straight out of the packet so I haven't measured them but they, they should be okay hopefully and positive end up that end and will it work who knows doesn't look as if it's working <laughs> Well, I seem to have got somewhere, but failed slightly. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that all of these are working properly. So we've got this longest and the last. So the last one was what? Oh, or maybe I have to be started for that. I don't know how that works. So that seems to be remembering the last longest one I did. Uh, I don't know what last is for, or whether that last, oh, well, right, this last one doesn't seem to be working too brilliantly for some reason so i think we're going to go and have to check the contacts for this one the start looks a bit worn down over the years i suppose and i haven't got the instructions at the moment so <laughs> i think that means i failed yeah 
That means I've failed. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but yeah. That part of the soundtrack where it's doing the beeps, I'll see if I can raise the volume so you can hear it. Uh, it's not particularly loud, but it is loud enough and it is only a piezoelectric type speaker. So it's not going to be extremely noisy. Uh, on the face of it, it looks as if it's basically working. Well, I'm going to switch it off now, not to drain the battery. I'm going to go and find the instructions and uh, then I'm going to come back and we'll sort this button out because this button is is too hard to press it shouldn't be that hard and we'll see if these game modes are working okay okay so uh two things um one one i've noticed i've taken this apart again so i wanted to have a look at the contacts but i have noticed that the the contacts on this are not very good um, although they are working these look fine these little rubberized granite pads here or whatever whatever is in them so I'm going to work this a little bit more actually with a fiber pen What I'll do is I'll try and get this in. These these are nice and bright and shiny now. So the trick is to try and turn. This is going to be an awkward operation. Is to try and turn this around and push this in. Right. Okay. So that's in now. And actually, there's there's two locating lugs here for these these little lugs that come in, the blue ones, they actually locate in there. So what we're going to do is make sure that they fit in those lugs. Which they're nowhere near at the moment. <laughs> um, right, now it's in. Okay, and so we get our white piece of rubbish cardboard reflector. What are low value item this is <laughs> and put this back on and we should should hopefully be able to bring these two together in holy man matrimony again right so let's get some screws back in So one thing that occurred to me actually is this, this is a handheld and yet we were using this down on the bench and as this is the speaker in the, in the back that gives the tones out we may have been muting that. Um, so this time when I, I test it what I'll do is I'll hold it in my hands like it should be out because it is a handheld one not one of those big round ones that you stick on the floor. Um, And we put our battery in. I'm not sure where I put the battery cover. Oh, it's on the other bench. Right, okay. So let's just see if it turns on again. What if I do something then? Start. What does that do? I've got no lights. Why have I got no lights? What have I done? Somehow I've lost my lights. I've done something stupid, I think. I had lights, now I have no lights. Unless that was a battery position. Was it the battery position? I might have done. 
I don't think I got it round the wrong way, but I might not have positioned them very well. Possibly. I don't know what drives the lights. Which one drives the lights and which one drives the chips. I don't know. Well, this one pushes that out, actually. So let's turn this on. Ah, that's all it was. The battery wasn't positioned very well. So that's giving me that uh, tone uh, because I didn't respond quickly enough. So let me start again. That get me. Oh no, it's not lighting up again. got a contact problem again. I think it's the batteries. I'm just wondering whether the, the battery cover uh, provides more locational support for those batteries or not. So let's go and see. No. Uh, at least it doesn't look like it. So why does this keep slipping out? Is this battery the wrong battery for this? Is this battery just pushing these over to the left? Um, oh, it's going crazy now, so let's turn it off. Now why was this not a problem the first time I did it and now it's a problem? I mean if we look on if we look on here that definitely shows this as a one of these type batteries and I'm pretty sure that this is connecting okay but if if it isn't if there's any worry about that we'll just pull those tabs out a little bit and let's take a look at these they do seem to be the right batteries um and these these tabs haven't moved at all, not at all. All we've done is to clean these up. So I think this is right. It may be that it requires a little uh, piece of card in there or something to stop it sliding out of position. So um, I don't know if I've got something I can just temporarily put in there that will do the trick, but maybe I have. So let's cut a piece of cardboard out of something I've got on the bench. So I'm using um, my cardboard bud box and all I'm going to do is fold over a small piece of cardboard and push it in here and see if that makes any difference. See if it prevents a problem. That's too long. So I'll have to trim that down a bit. Hopefully I won't cut my hand while I'm doing this. So I'm not really using anything to hold this down with. And I haven't got any scissors to hand. So I'm just going to improvise and hope for the best. Right, so let's push that in. Um, that should hopefully stop that. I think this is going in at a bit of an angle, you know. So this might be the problem. <clears throat> um, And why isn't that fitting in so easily anymore? <laughs> this is definitely the right way in. So what has happened? Is it because I tried to push these out a little bit too much? Yeah, I think it might be. 
actually. So these batteries are now definitely in. Let me put the battery cover on as well. And let me turn it around and see whether we've got... Okay, so at the moment this is working. Ah, I failed, I failed, I failed. I'm useless. <laughs> well, let's see if the last button works. Okay. That worked okay this time. Let's do it again. And once more. Didn't have to press down really hard this time and the longest one will be the same. Well, that seems to work. Okay, I'm pretty convinced that uh, we have fixed this now, but um, I still want to go and check out the instructions and then see if we can simulate at least the first couple of things in a, a multi-use mode and take it from there. Okay, uh, before we go and uh, take a look at the gameplay in a little bit more detail, I just wanted to show you the board again. So this looks a little bit different to what it looked like the last time you saw it. Um, so I was unsatisfied with the state of the board, the way that I left it uh, not sufficiently cleaned. So I took it back out again and I looked for every track that had the black dots or the black sort of speckles on it, which give you a corrosion indication. And I scraped all of it off. Uh, it took me quite a while, did it under a magnifying glass. As you can see there has been a repair on the bottom right hand corner of the photograph uh, where the power leads come in from the battery. Um, well, that's because when I was scraping it off the corrosion at that point because it was so close to the battery I suppose uh, had taken chunks of the copper away completely underneath uh, and so when it was scraped off at the top uh, there was no track left. Um, so it was hanging on by its bare teeth uh, and if I hadn't done this uh, this would have failed at some point in the future um, so it was the right thing to do to take it out and there it is uh, nice and clean now and uh, all repaired and should be good for quite a few years to come I hope okay so let's go on over to the gameplay so here we finally have the pocket Simon instruction leaflet uh, which I couldn't find earlier but now have found and the web address for that is seen at the top of the screen and it's at the uh, handheld museum so uh, I'm looking at it now online and I'm gonna read through some of the stuff that's in it and talk about it uh, it won't be a long section of this video, but enough for you to get an idea of how this game is supposed to work. Okay, so uh, the interaction basically says that it's a handheld uh, device and it's a handful of fun-filled entertainment. Um, three fascinating games, four varying skill levels, which we kind of touched on already. Um, good for solo play or group competition. Um, and in fact there are five exciting ways to play for one or more challenges. So pick up Simon and play. Uh, it's the mini sized travel game that gives you the maximum quick think react fast enjoyment. I actually think this is a good game uh, and I think uh, testament to it is the fact that it's survived over 40 years and is still being sold today in whatever you know sort of footprint it comes in. Uh, so take a look at the Simons easy to pick up hard to put down features I think we've kind of touched all on these anyway you've got the four lenses which have got lights behind them you've seen that uh, we touched on the last button the start button on the longest button already uh, to change the game switch we've kind of partially explored that and we've not really dealt with the skill level switch but we talked about it 
So let's carry on and take a quick look. Um, I think I said it was up to 31 sounds of signals. Uh, so this tells you what the different skill level settings gives you in terms of the number of signals. Uh, so it's 8, 14, 20 and 31 respectively. Uh, in my mind, I think 31 would be quite hard to achieve um, unless you're sort of ultra fast and got an amazing memory. Uh, that's quite a lot to remember in a sequence really. But I'm sure people are doing it. Um, so the start button we know about, the longest button, the last button, we've, we've, we've done all that already so no need to talk about that. Uh, preparing the battery insertion. Uh, yeah, so we've we've done that. We've seen that inserted many times. We talked about it. It does actually say here, uh, look for correct positioning of the nine volt transistor battery. And it doesn't actually, yes, it does. It says correct position of the AA type batteries. So that's where we had the problem. Um, so that's good advice. The bulb replacement. So this is something I, I didn't know, uh, not not the fact he can't replace the bulbs, but there was a spare bulb apparently at one point. So the reflector card which sits here, uh, which has got sort of normal card colour on one side and white on the other, so pointing up towards the lenses to give you the reflection we spoke about, had a little ear here of card and I thought that was to enable you to handle that without getting it dirty uh, but it did have a hole in it and apparently that was where you put the spare bulb or where you get the spare bulb should one of your existing bulb go uh, and need replacing you could use that well that isn't there we've seen that which is unfortunate it would be nice to actually find a Simon a pocket Simon that has that spare bulb in I don't even know where you could get these from today uh, there might be a sort of LED replacement or something for it I don't know So on to the games then. So game one, I said uh, uh, that it was a single player. Apparently it's not a single player game. It's for one or more players. So we've been through and you've seen how this uh, uh, game works. Basically you just press the start and you get a sequence beginning with one. Uh, you repeat that and then you continue. Uh, so if it's, if it's on level one, you only have to get that sequence up to eight and you'll get what they call a RAS, uh, which we'll be doing later. I am going to try and achieve that. Um, at least if I don't do that, then um, that's not good, right? So we will go and do that. Um, even though I've already failed about two or three times, I, I will succeed. Um, right, so we don't need to talk much about that. Uh, it does say for two or more players, basically it's the same game. The game doesn't change. All you do is share the control. Um, so it's still the same same thing and you'll, you'll just play against each other and whoever, you know, gets to, to, uh, to get the Raz at the end is the winner or, you know, whoever uh, is last on basically is the winner so yeah so if you're if you're the one that gets the eh, that means you're the loser and the other guy's the winner in terms of where you got to and if you get the raz that means you completed that level that's the way I understand it anyway um, if you're on skill level 4 there's a very special victory signal what that looks like I don't know it says Pocket Simon with flash and sound and all the senses at several times, or lenses at several times, and then emit a short raz in, uh, indicating that you've won the game. I want to see that, but I'm not sure how we're going to achieve that. Maybe not in this video, but I might, I might do another one. Um, right. Game two. Uh, this is for one or more players. So this game appears to basically uh, be similar to the, the first one except uh, that Simon won't give you more than the first signal you have to you know add the extra uh, items in the series um, 
so I yeah I've had a look at this but you know I don't want to really pursue it because I haven't got anyone else to play with and I don't really feel like duplicating myself and pretending to be two different people at the same time um, so that's that's how that that works it's it's a similar thing basically um, and then the third game is one where you you're able to do the same thing you have two three or four players and you get to choose a color so somebody will choose the first color do their bit somebody will choose the next color and do their bit um, and, and so on and the last one standing is either the the winner out of the group or you know has got the Raz at the end so yeah and then just warranty information at the end which is not really part of the instructions uh, I doubt very much whether any of this is relevant anymore it's it's been many 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 years so certainly don't go right in into to them at that address because they're probably not there but I don't I don't know that they might or they might not be I think Melton Bradley who made this game uh, became part of Hasbro I believe I'm not 100% certain of that but I think they did um, I'm not sure when that happened and there you can see down the bottom you've got www.handheldmuseum.com which is where this uh, this is being looked at this set of instructions so yeah that's it really not much more to say than that um, and then we're going to go over in a minute and do some gameplay and try and get the Raz so let's go and do it okay so here goes attempt three Attempt four. Well, I've had a great time doing this video and I hope you've had a great time watching it. Um, so if you'd like to uh, like and subscribe, turn your notifications on, that would be great. More videos coming down the line and I will see you next time.